In this video, I want to talk about how to identify a conic section from its equation in its general form if we assume it's not degenerate, which is a big assumption. But let's just say that someone came along and gave us a non-degenerate conic section in its general form, ax squared plus cy squared plus dx plus ey plus f equals zero, where a and c are not simultaneously zero. Well, the reason for that is if a and C are both zero, then we just get a line, which is one of our degenerate conic sections, which we're told we don't have. If A is zero, then, well, we still have a parabola. If C is zero, then, well, we still have a parabola, and we'll write these rules down there like that just for a moment. And I know right now what you're thinking is, uh, it looks like I've skipped a letter of the alphabet by accident, and I certainly actually did that on purpose. It turns out that you still have a conic section if you add in a plus bxy term in the middle there, because b times x times y is also a quadratic term, right? Because the degree of this term is the sum of the variables in the exponent. Um, it turns out when we add that term, term in, our conic sections turn, uh, they rotate. And the rules we're actually getting ready to write down no longer apply. Um, in our course at LMS Community College this semester, we won't be talking about the ones with rotated axes in great detail. Um, so for the ones we meet, um, these rules will apply. All right, so let's first think about what has to be true about A and C to have a circle. Well, it turns out that that means A and C have to be the same. We're actually probably more comfortable thinking about the equation of a circle in its general form just having a one x squared plus one y squared plus constants. But if we put any other numbers in front of x and y squared, the x squared and y squared there, everything's gonna be okay because we could just divide both sides of the equation by that value and end up with this exact same equation. Well, after a circle, the next logical place to go is, well, the ellipse. And in the ellipse, A and C aren't going to be the same thing, otherwise we'd have a circle. They need to be different, but they actually both either need to be positive or both be negative. And the easiest way to write that down is if they have the same sign, then A times C is greater than zero. If I multiply those two numbers, but in parentheses here, I'll just make the note that A and C have to have the same sign. All right, well, after the ellipse, I wanna talk about the hyperbola. And I think y'all have already probably identified it. Right here, A and C are gonna have, have opposite signs. One's gonna be positive, one's going to be negative. So I see that opposite in signs thing that I expect with a hyperbola in its standard form. And so, well, if A and C have opposite signs and A times C is less than zero, then we can just make that same note. A and C have different signs. And then finally, the only thing left to talk about is the parabola, and I kind of spoiled that at the very beginning, that either A or C is equal to zero. And in the same vein that I'm thinking about things there, well, that would mean that A times C is equal to zero. Because if one of them is equal to zero, when I multiply them, I definitely get zero. And here we could write that that just means that either A is zero or C is zero, but of course, not both. Right, literally warned about that at the very beginning. All right, so here I have four conic sections, and we've been asked to identify them under the promise that none of them are degenerate. So these four rules are all we need to know. And number one here, I'm looking at this, I see A, C, D, E, and F, just looking at A and C, they have the same sign or not equal, so that has to be the equation of an ellipse, you know, as long as we're promised that. X squared and Y squared are both positive. The thing in front of each is one. That means that has to be the equation of a circle. Down here in number three, I see a Y squared with no X squared. That has to be the equation of a parabola. And then finally, I see a positive nine X squared and a minus 16 Y squared, leaving that to be a hyperbola. All right, if I wasn't guaranteed this, 
I'd be completing the square a whole lot to see if I could write these in their standard forms. But under that guarantee, that's a very kind of simple process to go through.